Good evening. It's 6 o'clock on Monday, March 27th, 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, where we bring you today's top stories translated into English every weeknight. Albania's Prime Minister, Eddie Rama, held a meeting today with state police directors where he presented the newly appointed Minister of Interior. During the meeting, Prime Minister Rama declared that 2017 will mark the end of cannabis cultivation in Albania, saying that there is trust in the state police as evidenced by the increasing number of citizen calls to the police. There are great challenges ahead, but the fight against cannabis should be accelerated. Following the destruction of the Lazarat Republic of Shame, we have good reason to consider 2017 as the year that will put this long history to an end. This history didn't begin in 2013, but now, in 2017, we have the premise for its epilogue. The work began with checks to prevent cannabis cultivation, and police employees will be held personally responsible for every cannabis root planted. This is to encourage partnership so that by autumn we can come before the people and our partners with pride. The state police have seized more than 100 million euro in crime money, and there have been no murders from the blood feuds in the last three years, said Rama. The new Minister of Interior, Fatmir Jafai, declared that the tough measures will be not only for those who plant cannabis, but also for those who allow cannabis planting, stating a zero tolerance for any police officers who support crime. Mr. Jafai also spoke of vetting police employees, declaring that the time has come that all police officers must undergo the vetting process. The Minister of Interior also commented on the upcoming elections, emphasizing that the guarantee of free and fair elections is a priority of the Ministry of Interior. Democratic Party Chairman Lul Zambasha is insistent he has U.S. support for his cause. During a conversation held with citizens at the protesters' tent, the DP chairman declared that he received complete support during his visit to the U.S., adding that this support will be transformed into political action. The Democratic Party's cause for free and fair elections, the cause to remove crime from politics, and the uncompromising fight against drugs all have Washington's full support. We will translate this support into political action, which has only one aim, an Albania with European standards. We will not withdraw, Basha said. The DP chairman responded to internationals critical of him, highlighting that the opposition will not give up on its demand to establish a provisional government. This is the battle for the new republic, the battle for a European Albania, and therefore the opposition will not withdraw, as that would mean the collapse of free and fair elections. We are determined to push for free and fair elections without Eddie Rama serving as Prime Minister, Basha said, adding that he will never accept a justice system controlled by Prime Minister Eddie Rama. Earlier today, the DP chairman held a meeting with the chairman of the DP branches, to whom he discussed his visit to the United States of America. It is learned that Basha has asked DP branch chairman to completely mobilize their energies towards the protest and some sources also told Aura News that the DP branch chairman have asked for the protest to escalate. Angela Merkel's party is asking the Democratic Party chairman to stop boycotting parliament and to cooperate for the judicial reform. In a letter dated March 23rd, the vice chairman of Germany's parliamentary CDU-CSU, Franz Josef, who is also the head of foreign policy in the CDU and Germany's Minister of Defense, has expressed his concern about the Democratic Party's decision to boycott Parliament, declaring that this is the wrong way. After my parliamentary group strongly committed to the judicial reform in your country and the reform was later approved in Parliament on July 21st, we are now dissatisfied that the reform, which 90% of Albanian people want, is not being implemented because the Democratic Party is boycotting Parliament, reads the letter, adding that the concern for free elections is legitimate, but their boycott is not the solution. 
he emphasizes that his act would be turning Albania backwards on its path towards the European Union and would damage the relations between the Democratic Party and the CDU-CSU. The Socialist Party Parliamentary Group held a meeting today headed by the group chairman, Gramoz Rucci, who called on socialist MPs to attend the upcoming plenary session and approve the implementation of the judicial reform package of bills. Some important bills which need a qualified majority of 84 votes in order to be approved include the Code of Criminal Procedures and the Criminal Code. The bills are finding difficulty in being approved as government allies, the Socialist Party and the Socialist Movement for Integration have not agreed on them all. The chairwoman of the Law Commission declared that the work for the codes has not concluded yet due to disagreements with the Socialist Movement for Integration over the codes to which the chairman of the Socialist Parliamentary Group asked the MPs to solve the disagreements, use common language, and find a way to pass the bills in Parliament. Meanwhile, Vice Chairman of the Socialist Parliamentary Group, Tawant Bala, appealed to the opposition, urging them to attend the plenary session in order to vote on the judicial reform package of bills. The majority had the 84 votes necessary to adopt these acts, but this is a good time for the opposition to fulfill its obligations towards their electorate, to return to Parliament in order to vote for these important laws, such as the Criminal Procedure Code and the Criminal Code, to intensify the fight against corruption, organized crime, and any other evil of our society, stated Bala. When asked about elections for Kavaya's mayor, Mr. Bala said that the Socialist Party will participate in the elections, saying, the Socialist Party will participate in the elections in Kavaya and in the June 18th elections. This decision not to participate is like a student who has to take an exam and he wants to postpone the exam because he is not prepared. Earlier today, the Prime Minister gathered secretaries and coordinators of the Socialist Party to discuss their duties for the upcoming electoral campaign. Tirana's mayor, Ariane Villiai, inspected the Tirana Olympic Park today, the city's new sports complex set to open its doors by the end of May. The new complex will provide modern venues for all sports disciplines, including weightlifting, wrestling, athletics, and hand games. Mayor Villiai, accompanied by the Socialist Party MP Pandeli Maiko, declared that City Hall is implementing a series of projects designed to revive the arts, culture and sports in Tirana, saying this project is funded by Tirana City Hall and the Albanian government and it is expected to be completed by the end of May. Finally, after 60 years, we will have a new sports building. This will allow us to start a new project at the existing sports building so that Tirana will have two sports buildings. It is important that the difference between those who sleep and those who work be made on June 18th, declared the mayor. The new sports complex includes two modern buildings that will house all Olympic sports federations, the respective training gyms, and a large hall for the national volleyball and basketball games. The sports hall will have a 1,200 seat capacity and will serve as the training ground for the national basketball and volleyball teams during their preparatory phase. Albania has joined in Global Money Week activities. Global Money Week aims to raise awareness in children and youth to be responsible and financially capable citizens. The governor of the Bank of Albania and the Minister of Education called on young people to learn to save money. The BOA governor declared that this week of activities is important as it helps the youth to take their first step towards the future by saving. The Minister of Education said the basis of saving starts in the early school years and that schools should teach students more about how to save. Global Money Week is an annual global celebration initiated by Child and Youth Finance International with local and regional events and activities that inspire children and youth to learn about money and saving. 
Their mission is educating children and young people about their social and economic rights and responsibilities is key to creating a generation of capable adults who can make wise decisions for their financial future. Developing livelihood skills or receiving entrepreneurial training supports children and young people in getting a job or building their own business and developing their careers. That's all for our English edition this evening. Please join us again Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. for your local news in English. My name is Mari, and on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.